All right, so this is case uh, 20 here. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Case 19. We are on acral skin or near acral skin. It's got thick acanthotic epidermis, hypergranulosis, thick uh, orthokeratin, and this pink band, which is called the stratum lucidum, even though it looks pink or orange rather than actually clear or pale. That's, that's the way it usually looks on H&E. And the only place in the body that you can really see a well-developed stratum lucidum is acral skin, palm or sole skin, or skin that has been rubbed or scratched and has chronic reactive change or lichen simplex chronicus pariga nodularis change. And the reason here, there may be a little bit of both. This is skin that is acral or near acral because this is from the proximal nail fold, which is the area, you know, uh, non-medical people will refer to as the cuticle, the area that they, you know, push back when they do a manicure. The skin just below that uh, is actually called the proximal nail fold, and um, which is between your last, uh, your distal interphalangeal joint and the area where your nail starts. And in that area, if you get a translucent bluish pale papule, um, sometimes with ulceration or reactive change, like this is starting to kind of ooze out and, and, and break through the skin. So sometimes they ulcerate or patients can pick at them. But underneath what you see is we have this pools of blue mucin. And in this case, this, this is just like what we saw in the ganglion cyst. And, um, some people say that, so this, this lesion here is called a digital mucus cyst or digital myxoid cyst. And I think of this basically as the same kind of thing as a ganglion cyst, but it's small and it's in the proximal nail fold. Some people have said, well, this should technically not connect with the underlying joint, whereas a true ganglion cyst will connect. But I don't really understand if this is not coming as a fluid leaking up from the joint. How's this, how's this mixed material getting here? So I don't, I don't know who makes these rules, but in my opinion, I think these can overlap. And I've seen some hand surgeons will call things that are obviously deep ganglion cysts. They'll still call them digital mixoid cyst or digital mucus cyst, even though it's not in the proximal nail fold and is, is down, down, you know, in the digit uh, connected to the joint. So some hand surgeons will actually use digital mucus cyst and ganglion cyst synonymously. Uh, I think of them as presenting a little differently, but the same spectrum that you've got this pseudo cyst. In this case, I feel like these ones in the skin almost never have any uh, synovial lining. They just have a, a dense kind of layer that's kind of a sharp cut off. And then mixoid change, uh, a, a mixoid mucin material filling the cyst space, sometimes breaking through the epidermis with variable amounts of ulcer, inflammation, reactive change. I've sometimes seen these, <clears throat> just not long ago, I saw one that was <clears throat> clinically thought to be a traumatized verruca because I, I, I assume the patient had been picking at it, understandably. And on the original section, I saw some epidermal changes that looked verrucoid and some neutrophils. And then I did deeper uh, levels and I saw some little aggregates of mucin. And I was like, ah, this actually probably represents the surface of a traumatized uh, 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 digital mucus cyst that has some uh, secondary lichen simplex chronicus change from picking. So that's a nice example to know when you're lucky, all the, the mucin will stay there. But a lot of times the mucin washes out. And so what you'll get is just an empty space. But this empty space like this at this site is still good for a digital mucus cyst. And the other thing is that sometimes what you'll get also is that the mixoid material seeps out into the dermis and you'll get adjacent areas that look a lot like focal cutaneous mucinosis, focal dermal mucinosis, or, or almost like a cutaneous myxoma. Sometimes it will begin to get those bubbly uh, mucophage cells like we saw in that last ganglion cyst. And you can see areas that become a little bit more cellular or it'll be very loose. It can be any spectrum of those. So if I see a papule from the proximal nail fold that just shows mucin in between dermal collagen with no cystic space, I'll still say that's consistent with a digital mucus cyst because sometimes that's all you see and you don't actually see the cyst. You just see a pocket of mixoid material that looks like digital, you know, like dermal mucinosis or, or a myxoma, but it's a small lesion right there on the proximal nail fold. That's still to me compatible with the digital mucus cyst, even if you don't see the actual pseudo cyst itself. So it's a good, good one to know about and a very nice example. I would say most of the time we don't get lucky enough to have a perfectly intact one with all the mucin retained. This is like textbook, too good to be true. Most of the time it's not this good.